Hello and welcome to the show. I'm here on Forza Motorsport 5 with another silly car build. Today, I've got my favourite car, the Shelby Daytona. Okay, I saw this suggested a little while back and I thought I'll, I'll give it a go with this because, well, we can have an interesting engine swap. In, I say interesting, the same engine that goes in most of the American cars, the NASCAR engine. It's rare that the game allows me to open the bonnet, normally it doesn't. And I'm pretty sure that this is still just the standard engine that it's showing me. Uh, yeah, whoopsie, that's not the button I wanted to press. I should have closed the bonnet, goddammit. Uh, so yeah, we have got the NASCAR engine in this vehicle. All near enough a thousand horsepower of it. Uh, which could be interesting. Uh, I do I do like this car. I really do very much like the Daytona. <laughs> interesting thing that I just found about it. Uh, when we got the, you know, we've got to have the aero parts on it because I'm hopefully going to have a bit of grip. So unsurprisingly, we've got this slightly strange. Well, I'm not even sure you would call that a spoiler on the back. Of it, but it's what Forza tends to do with all of the the classic cars that don't really have a good place to put a wing on. It has one of them, which is okay. It's, it's, it, it looks all right, maybe a, a tad silly, but it works. However, the front splitter on this is hilarious. If we press the right button, there we go. My, my Shelby's growing a beard. I'm not really sure that that is a splitter. I don't think that's quite how it is. It's just like a wall. I mean, to be fair, the one at the back is a little bit of a wall as well, but the, <laughs> I'm not sure that's quite how splitters work down there. Mm. It is not a car designed for splitters or wings, as you could probably tell. I, there isn't really a good place to mount a splitter on the front. I, I'm very well aware of that. It looks kind of amusing to me. So, um, yeah, there we go. Oh, uh, what do we go back this way? I do remember the controls. As far as upgrade-wise goes, it has the, the full-on NASCAR engine, which gives it plenty of power. 994, plenty of torque, and this is not a heavy car. 2,300 pounds. That's a pretty damn big power-to-weight ratio. Could make the car very quick. I would imagine this thing will accelerate like mad, but it could also be a bit difficult to control, really. We do have some big tyres. I think they're the same size tyres that we had on the Lamborghini Diablo, and that went quickest. So we have got decent sized tyres that should produce a decent amount of traction, hopefully some cornering grip. My main concern, it's not a small car as such, it's not going to be like the Elise and the Lotus 11 in very, very small, and having the, the, the tiny wheelbase make the car twitchy. I'm worried perhaps about the lightweight. It should stop quickly, should have good brakes, but who knows how well it will be able to deal with all of that power. Anyway, as per normal, we will go to the Sebring Club Circuit, where I have four laps to beat a lap time set by a V8 supercar. V8 supercar's lap, a 1.8.1 that I am going to try and beat with the Shelby. I'm fairly confident the Shelby will be quicker in a straight line and much faster accelerating. So when it comes to the corners, I'm not so, so sure. I mean, we had the Jaguar E-Type that was a classic car that was very good to drive. I had the Maserati Tipo Birdcage that wasn't very good to drive. So, who knows? There's only one way to find out. Please don't try and kill me, Shelby, okay? I do really like you, so please be nice and perform well and maybe go quite quickly. I don't know what... I don't, <laughs> I don't think this will beat the Diablo. Then again, I didn't expect the Diablo to do particularly well. Uh, oh, okay. We've got round turn one. This is the test of the car. Can we be flat out through here? Oh, we can be. That's not the outcome I expected from this. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Okay. That's. I. I. I thought this would be a bit more, a little bit switchier. We kind of got grip. I mean, I do have to be very careful on the uh, accelerating front with this car, as you could probably imagine. But it's not, it's not quite as nice and controlled as the Diablo, <laughs> that's for sure. I can't boot it in second gear quite as easily, quite as nicely as I could with the big Lamborghini. But this isn't quite as scary as I had thought it would be. I thought it would slide a lot. Uh, but no, are we going to be flat here? This is the other test of the car. Ooh, <laughs> not quite. We don't quite have the grip for that. We do have a lot of straight line speed. Brakes not quite so sharp. Uh, yeah, I mean, despite the car's light weight, it still doesn't get stopped very easily. That's less, less than ideal. Normally, cars that weigh this much are a bit better under braking. Uh, we can be pretty quick. I don't quite have a slightly out of position on there. I'm not sure this is 
quite got the grip. Ooh, it does have a lively back end as well if you get it over a curb. Okay, don't clonk the curves while turning in. Avoid all of the curves is general rule for these silly cars. And then we might be okay if I can remember to get that <laughs> damn thing stop. I think we'll be quicker, definitely be quicker than the V8 supercar. Ooh, dear, if we can remember the brakes. <laughs> Bloody shall we? Okay, come on then, car. We are, oh, we're not on a particularly good lap this time. Got to stop sliding it around. It does, it wants to slide a little bit. It's not horrendous. It's not like constantly wheel spinning, constantly oversteering. It's just always, always ready to oversteer just a tiny bit like that. It's not massively Larry sideways moments like you got in that Ferrari thing that I had. But it's just there if you get it a small bit wrong. It will start, start going sideways. It's pretty controllable considering <laughs> we've got a thousand horsepower in a Shelby Daytona. Sure, it was a race car, but it wasn't built for this much power and this much speed. Well, actually, I say this much speed. I mean, it did 200 miles an hour, but not this kind of speed, if that makes sense. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's not designed for the acceleration, certainly, but it's dealing with it all pretty well. Uh, mm, the brakes are not as sharp as I had hoped on a, on the lightweight race car. Thought it would do a little bit better in the stopping department, but never mind. We're going to get one more lap after this one. This is better. Not quite ideal. Yeah, we are going We are going fairly quickly. Uh, oh dear, that's, that's a terrible line through there. Okay, we've got to be brave. We've got to be brave through this next corner, possibly. Can we... I don't trust it. It's not, it's not quite got enough rear end grip, which is a shame. It's not far off. Uh, 1 minute 6.4, yeah, and it's quick. <laughs> it's a, it's very quick. Oh, dearie me. Well, it's not going to go quicker than the 6.4. <laughs> Got a big slide on on that bit. Hmm, you know, this is it's easier to drive than I thought it would be. In all honesty, I thought this could be a bit of a pain. But I think with these big tyres, it certainly does help it. It's got decent enough traction out of the corners. It does oversteer, but it's not quite as horrible as some of the previous cars I've had. Not as bad as the Maserati birdcage or the Ferrari race car vehicle. There is still enough grip in this car to, to use it fairly sensibly. I mean, I'm not having to be too cautious around the corners. Or well, certainly, again, I'm comparing this to other city car builds. Compared to proper normal race cars you use on here, yeah, this is horrible. But compared to the city car builds, this is fairly easy to drive on the most part. The big downside is the brakes are not as sharp as I would like. It still takes an awful lot to get this car stopped, even though, I mean, we're stopping from about the same point and roughly the same speed as the Diablo, and the Diablo was 700 pounds heavier. So, <laughs> yeah, we have not really got the stopping power in this car, but it is pretty damn quick. Once you can, once you get it, once you get it around a lap, you've just got to be a little bit careful. It is oversteering. Uh, hmm, okay, I mean, that's still a pretty damn impressive lap time. 1 minute 6.4. That's very, very quick. A couple of seconds faster than the V8 supercar. So now time to find out how quick it goes in a straight line. As I said, the standard one of these uh, will do 200 miles an hour. I'm going to guess at perhaps 240, 250? Maybe it can do that. I mean, I don't know how come about how much power the normal one comes with. But uh, I, yeah, I think it could go pretty damn quickly around or down down the straight I'm not sure about the final turn or the not the final turn the turn at the end of the, the corner of the straight I think it may have a problem there looking at 230 with the arrow on so if we dump all of this off what will we do here we go we're going to be looking at 239 can we get any more speed out of the car I would hope so come on don't let me down Shelby we can do 242, can we do 250? 250 would be nice, but I think that's probably pushing it a little bit, no. Okay, we're not quite going to get 250 out of it. 200 and, yeah, about 242 then is as good as we're going to get. Oh, quick, hold on, little little movements, we'll get there in the end. Well, I say that, it's probably not going to reach it. There we go, That'll, that, that will do on the speed front. 242, will we reach it by the end of the straight? Um, don't know. I th actually, I think we probably will. I think this car will have good enough acceleration to get to its top speed. I am not so confident about the corners. Struggling a little bit with rear end grip at Sebring. Not massively, but we're struggling a bit. So I... Th uh, add the bumps on as well. 
Yeah, it, mm, it will be a scary moment going around that corner, seeing what on earth happens. Hopefully we will come out of the other side and we will be okay. And not filled with confidence uh, <laughs> with this, but never mind. I shall do my best for the Daytona to see. Yeah, I will, I will try and keep it flat. So we're there. Mm, yeah, I'm not, not entirely sure. How do we deal with these first corners at Le Mans? A uh, little, little bit of understeer until I tried to use some throttle and then we got all of the oversteer. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not a terrible car to drive. You know, it's certainly better than I was perhaps expecting from it. It's got this fairly, like fairly, fairly stable on the most part, despite its fairly lightweightness. Lightweightness, that's a thing now. Uh, we're not taking a very good line through there at all. Uh, I don't like Le Mans. <laughs> Never have done. Uh, so that was that was a very poor line. How do we deal with the bumps here? The Diablo, I could be flat out over them, or near enough flat out over them. Can this? Uh, that's a very again very poor line. Well, we can kind of take some speed over. That's not really the opportune racing line, but never mind. Come on then, Shelby. Let's see what we can do in a straight line. Yeah, pretty. That's some decent-ish acceleration for 200 miles an hour already. So uh, yeah, I mean it certainly pulls 220. Only 20 more miles an hour to go. You, hopefully you can go quicker than the Diablo. The Diablo got 239. Come on, Shelby. You can. Ooh, we're struggling now. It's that final few miles an hour. Just getting everything. Can you do it? Oh, I don't know if you can. Come on. 39. Come on, do 240, please. Please do 240. There we go. Just ticked over to 240. Briefly. Here comes up the corner. We are. Oh, we're bouncing. We're bouncing. It got a little rough through there. It did make it. Hmm. <laughs> it was. It was heading towards the wall at one point. But we did make the turn. We got the 240 mile an hour mark out of it. That's pretty bloody fast. Um, <laughs> it made the turn. Yeah, Daytona. Well, I'm always going to like it. Uh, but it's it's not it's not too bad to drive. And uh, like around the lap, a one minute six point four is bloody fast. So yeah, I, it's it's not too bad. It's, 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 it's not too bad. You've got to be careful with the oversteer. It will, it will spin up the rear wheels. It is easy to slide this car around if you aren't very careful with it. Uh, but if you are, if you do, do just be a little bit patient on the throttle. It's actually not as, it's not as terrifying to drive as perhaps it could be. Anyway, that is it for this video, guys. So uh, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, a goodbye.